at day 47. Uh, what should hopefully be a mi mistake free video. I'm still kicking myself about the mistake I made yesterday. Ugh. Okay, uh, I'm going to take a look at problems 5, 7, 13, and 17. Um, and we'll look at some more in the videos tomorrow and on Friday. So problem 5 says f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 2. Find, right, I just kind of simplified this. Find the c value that proves the mean value theorem on negative 2, 4. Okay, so the first thing we know is mean value theorem has a very important equation that goes with it. And we can use the mean value theorem anytime a function is differentiable. x squared minus 6x plus 2 is obviously differentiable. It's a quadratic. It's nice and smooth and connected. So again, the formula we know about MVP, MVT says that f prime of c is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. What we have to do here is identify, in this particular problem, what are A and B referring to, right? Well, we look to our interval. Negative 2 is our A value. So I like to write A right above or below negative 2 and B right here, just so I keep that straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what F prime of C is equal to, so I can eventually identify what C is going to be. F prime of C is not my answer, but it is necessary to, to find my answer. So, to do this, I'm going to write f prime of c. That must equal f of b, but b in this case is 4, minus f of a, which is f of negative 2, over 4 minus negative 2, which I'm going to change to 4 plus 2. Okay. Now, what I've seen some students do, which is nice, is just somewhere else on the paper, people will work out what f of 4 is and what f of negative 2 is. That works well, and then plug them in. Or if you're going to try and do it all in this big quotient, we got to put what f of 4 is in parentheses and what f of negative 2 is in parentheses, so we make sure we do it accurately. Either way, work out what f of 4's value and f of negative 2's value first, right? When we plug that in, we get 4 squared, which is 16. 16 minus 24 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. And I have to subtract f of negative 2. f of negative 2, well, that would be negative 2 squared. That's 4. 4 plus 12 is 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. I get negative 6 minus 18 over 4 plus 2 is 6. Negative 6 minus 18. Don't screw this up. Hopefully I won't. Negative 6 minus 18 is negative 24. Negative 24 divided by 6 equals negative 4. So what I know is f prime of c has to equal negative 4. Right? That f of b minus f of a over b minus a, that's the slope of the secant line that connects the points x values negative 2 and x value 4. That slope is negative 4. Mean value theorem says there's got to be some c value in between negative 2 and 4 where f prime of c equals negative 4. Okay? So next I want to figure out f prime of x. Right? I want to get two things that f prime or c are equal to and set them equal to each other. So first I want to figure out what f prime of x is. Well, going back to my function up here, I know f prime of x is 2x minus 6. So then I can say f prime of c is 2c minus 6. Now I've got two equations that f prime of c equals. Setting those two equations equal to each other will solve for my value c. So I got 2c minus 6 equals negative 4. Add the 6 over, I got 2c equals 2. And I get c equals 1 is my final answer. To make sure your final answer is correct, make sure that that c value is actually between a and b, which in this case it is. Great, let's take a look at problem 7. Problem 7 says, I want to find the x values of the absolute max and absolute min of f on the interval negative 4, 2. Right? And I have a function f of x here. Here's what we need to know from our extreme value theorem. Right? Absolute maxes and absolute mins can only occur at endpoints and critical points. Now, I already know the two endpoints. One is negative 4 and one is 2. But I don't know any critical points yet. 
We have to know, right, this is one of our note cards. Um, F has a critical point whenever F prime equals zero. So I need to find F prime and I need to set it equal to zero. And I need to put um, those as possible candidates as well. So solving this, I'm just going to find F prime of X first. I'm going to get 3X squared minus 2 times 3 halves is 3X minus 6. So I want to set this thing equal to zero. First thing I see here is instead of doing an RS method that's going to be more difficult, I'm going to divide everything by 3 in this equation, and I'm going to get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Now the RS method is a lot easier. What two numbers multiply to negative 2 but add to negative 1? That would be a negative 2 and a positive 1. This gives me two critical points that I get. I get a critical point of 2 and I get a critical point of negative 1. So what I want to do now is make a candidates test, right? I got to test the endpoints and the critical points. So I'm going to make a table here of x and f of x. I always like doing this to keep my information nice and organized. Now, when I take a look, I want to make sure my critical points are in my interval. Negative 1 definitely is between negative 4 and 2. 2 is interesting because it's a critical point, but it's also an endpoint. So I definitely have to test 2, but I only have to test it once. So the leftmost x value I need to test is negative 4. Then my next point would be negative 1. And the last point I need to check is 2. So I only have three candidates here for absolute max and absolute min. What I need to do now is test all of them. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, right? I need to plug these numbers into F to solve. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm going to expe expedite that process. So when I do F of negative 4, right, I'm going to plug it in there, and I should get an answer of negative 62. You're going to have to do that by hand, but just for this video, I'll speed it up. When I plugged in negative 1, I got an answer of 11 halves. You're also welcome to write 5.5 in there, since it's a terminating decimal. And when I plugged in 2, I got an answer of negative 8. So taking a look at these, I can identify my absolute max and my absolute min. Let's start with absolute max. Well, which is the highest F value? Well, it's the only one that's positive, and that's 11 halves. So that's my absolute max. What x value did 11 halves occur at? Negative 1. Which one do I need to write here? Well, this problem specifically asks for the x values of the absolute max. So I can say the absolute max occurs. Right? Sometimes what I like to do is write absolute max right here. And then I'll identify my, my lowest number was up here. Sometimes I write those in there so I don't accidentally write the wrong one when I'm answering this question. Okay. So the absolute max, because the question specifically asks for the x values, I'm not going to write 11 halves. I'm going to say the absolute max occurs at x equals negative 1. The absolute min occurs at x equals negative 4. Okay. So that's my answer for that one. If I would have phrased question 7 differently, if I would have said find the absolute maximum value of f, the absolute maximum value would be 11 halves. That's what I would say. Okay. The absolute minimum value would be negative 62. But since this question specifically asks for the x values, I just have to write the x values instead. All right, let's flash forward to question number 13. Question 13, I want to find the x values of the critical points of f and determine if each critical point is a relative max, relative min, or neither, and justify it. 
Okay, so there's a lot of work to be done here. The first thing we need to do is identify the critical points of f. Well, we know from our note cards that the critical points of f occur when f prime equals zero or f prime is undefined. Since this is a nice polynomial, we don't have to worry about undefined. So let's find f prime of x and set it equal to zero. Let's set this baby equal to zero. Oops, 24x plus 36. Now I notice that 3, 24, and 36 are all divisible by 3. So I've got x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Solving this equation now, I get uh, what two numbers multiply to 12 but add to 8? That's 6 and 2. So I got x plus 6 and x plus 2. So my two critical points are at x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 2. So those are my critical points, but I'm not done. I need to determine, are those critical points local mins, local maxes, or neither? Well, in order to, to tell that, right, a local max we know from our note cards is when f prime switches from plus to minus. A local min is when f prime switches from minus to plus. And a neither point is when f prime doesn't switch signs. So I need to do a sign test here to determine how f prime changes, or e if it even does, around those two values. The best way to do that is with a number line. The number line we want here is obviously an f prime number line because we want to know how f prime changes. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is pick a number less than negative 6, and I want to plug it into f prime to see if I get a positive number or a negative number. So let's think about negative 10. Okay. I'm going to plug it into my factored form here. And really when I do that, I'm going to think about a 3 right here. That's always positive, right? Negative 10 plus 6 is a negative number. Negative 10 plus 2 is a negative number. I have an even number of negative signs. So f prime is positive on the left side of negative 6. I'll use negative 4 for the next one. 3 is always positive. Negative 4 plus 6, well, that's now a positive number. Uh, negative 4 plus 2, that is still a negative number. So I have an odd number of negative signs, so it's going to be minus in between. Then I'll choose 0. 3 is positive. 0 plus 6 is positive. 0 plus 2 is positive. So you're positive here. Now, these sign tests are useful for determining whether f is increasing or decreasing. Um, there are, but they're also, we don't need to do that here. What I just need to figure out now is what type of critical points these are. Well, when we look at x equals negative 6, again, when f prime is plus on the left side here, my f graph is increasing. And then f prime switches to minus, so f switches to decreasing. This is obviously a max. Right? x equals negative 6 is a, what word did I use, local or relative? Relative, x equals negative 6 is a relative max because my justification here is f prime switches from positive to negative. Yeah. x equals negative 2 then would be a local min. Because f prime switches switches from minus to plus. So both of those points were relative extrema. We didn't have any neither points in this. Um, negative six x equals negative six happened to be a relative max. Negative two. I should have used the word relative min, but that's okay. Local min is the same thing. All right, lastly, let's take a look at 17. I chose 17 because it's an interesting problem to look at. 17 gives you f prime is 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 3x cubed. It says find the x values of the inflection points of f and justify. Okay, so this is different than critical points. These are inflection points. 
What we need to know from our note cards is when we get inflection points. Well, inflection points occur on a couple of different things. When f prime switches from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, that's going to be really hard without a graph. So I want to think about another definition for inflection points, which is when f double prime changes signs. That's the one we want here. Right? I said this is the one we're going to use mostly for functions. So I want to identify when does f double prime change signs. Well, the number f double prime will change signs at will be zero. So let's find the zeros of f double of f double prime. I need to only do one derivative here because I'm already, excuse me, I'm already at f prime. So I only need to do one derivative to get to f double prime. f double prime of x, four times a fourth is one. So I get x to the third <coughs> minus nine x squared. Okay. So what I want to do is take this. Take my second derivative and set it equal to zero. Okay, to solve this thing, I want to factor out. Both terms have an x squared, so I'm going to factor out an x squared. And what I'm left with is x minus 9. And I'm going to set both of these parts equal to zero. x squared equals zero when x equals zero. So that's one of my candidates. And then x equals 9 is my other candidate. So I want to check both of these on the f double prime number line. I'm doing an f double prime number line because I want to see if f double prime, right? I know f double prime is 0 at 0 and 9, but I have to make sure that my concavity actually changes, that the sign of f double prime actually changes. So i got to plot 0 and 9. So I'm going to plug in test numbers um, to the left of 0, between 0 and 9, and to the right of 9. So let's start with to the left of zero. I'll choose negative one. I like plugging it into the factored version, right? Negative one squared is a positive number. In fact, any number we square is going to be positive. So negative one squared is a positive. Negative one minus nine is definitely a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. Next, I'm going to use the number of positive one. Right? In between 0 and 9 is positive 1. 1 squared is still positive, but 1 minus 9 is still negative. So I still have a negative region here between 0 and 9. Be careful on that. Lastly, I want to check 10. 10 squared is positive. 10 minus 9 is also positive. So out of my two candidates, x equals 0 and x equals 9, only x equals 9 is an inflection point here. So my inflection point is only at x equals 9. My justification is because that's where, oops, that's where, that would block a T. That's where f double prime switches signs. Okay. Even though f double prime equals 0 when x equals 0. That is not an inflection point. I was concave down and then I was concave down again. That's not, a, that is not an inflection point. Only 9. I'm only looking for when f double prime changes signs. All right, that's it for this one. Um, feel free to swing by during ninth hour today or tomorrow. Um, I'll do more of these videos the next couple days here as we're getting ready for our big test. Talk to you later, guys. Two chains. Bye.